Some procedures at the travel agency call for several tasks to be carried out one right after another in a given order. One example is in the case of a reservation for a holiday package at a specific attraction. When entering the reservation, we must verify that the individual booking the package is a customer of the agency. If he or she is not, then we must enter them as a customer. Having done this, we must verify the existence of packages available for the number of individuals who want to make the trip. If there are enough seats available, the reservation is assigned. Otherwise, the passenger is offered a different package. A sequence of steps like the one described is what we call business process. Genexus enables us to define processes like this one. Let's try it. Because we need to record the reservations for holiday packages, what we did in advance was to create a reservations transaction with attributes to store the identifier, the date of the reservations, the number of passengers who will be using the package, an ID and name of the customer related to the reservation, and reservation available to mark whether the holiday package is available or not. For the customer ID attribute, we select the nullable column with value yes to indicate that, at the time of entering a reservation, we might still not have the customer ID for the individual making the reservation. We now go on to create an object of the business process diagram type. We select File, New, and select an object of the business process diagram type, which we will call Attraction Reservation. We see a blank page of the diagram we will build. If we open the toolbox, we can see that there is a large amount of symbols that we can apply. To mark the start of our business process, we drag a None Start Event symbol. Because our first task will be to enter a reservation, we place the reservation transaction in the Folder View window and drag it into the diagram. We can see that a green rectangle under the name Reservation has been created, with the person icon in the upper left to indicate that an activity of interactive type has been created, since the transaction allows for a user to enter data through it. To connect the Start node with the transaction, we click on the lower section of the green circle, and holding the mouse button, we drag until the tip of the arrow reaches the upper border of the transaction rectangle. According to the process used at the travel agency, the system must control whether the individual making the reservation is already a customer or not. To represent a decision on the diagram, we go to the toolbar, click on Gateways, we drag an exclusive gateway node over the diagram, and link it from the reservation transaction. This type of node assesses a condition, and depending on the results, it makes the flow continue downstream, which would be the normal route, or to the right of the symbol, which is the alternate route. In our example, we must define the condition for the gateway which will make the flow to either go along the regular path or through the alternate path in order to add a customer. In other words, if the individual making the reservation of the holiday package is not a customer of the company, then the customer transaction must be invoked to add the new customer. First, we drag the customer transaction to the diagram and link it from the exclusive gateway node. To complete the definition of the decision, we have to add the condition that will, from the decision node, cause the process flow to continue to the right invoking the customer transaction or go downwards to the following task. In our case, the path to the right would be the alternate flow while the downward path would be the usual flow, that is, when the individual making the reservation is already a customer of the travel agency. To define the condition that will cause the diverging paths, we double-click on the green arrow that links the gateway with the customer transaction, and we will see that a window of the Conditions Editor opens up. We write the following, reservation dot customer ID equals zero to indicate that the flow must take that route if the customer ID attribute had a value of zero when the reservation was entered. 
Following this alternate path, the customer transaction will be open for us to add, as customer, the individual making the reservation. Once we confirm the entry, we must associate the customer we just created with the reservation. To do this, we must create a procedure, which we will call assign customer to reservation, where in the rules section, we will write a PARM rule with the parameters ampersand, reservation ID, and ampersand, customer ID. These variables store the identifier of the reservation we created at first and the customer identifier that we want to associate with that reservation. In the source we write for each where reservation ID equal to the reservation ID variable we received by parameter. Next, to customer ID we assign the value of the customer ID variable and then close the for each. This is how we assign the customer just created to the reservation that was entered before. We save and go back to the diagram. We now drag the procedure we just created to the diagram. We can see that a blue rectangle was generated, meaning that the task created is of the non-interactive type, also called batch type. This is because the procedure is executed without human intervention, so there is no interaction with the user who enters data, as is the case with transactions. And lastly, we connect the assigned customer to reservation procedure from the customer transaction. So far, we've described the task to be done when the alternate flow is executed, that is, adding a new customer and assigning it to the reservation. We'll now add the activity that will be done if the flow is the normal one, when it's not necessary to invoke the customer transaction. At this point, the agency employee must verify availability for the reservation, like checking flights, availability of the package requested for specific dates, among other things, and then instruct the system as to whether the reservation may be completed or not. To enter this data, we must have a screen where we will confirm or cancel the reservation. To do this, we can open the reservation transaction again and mark it as available or not with the reservation available attribute. To do so, we place the reservation transaction in the folder view window and we'll drag it to the diagram and connect it from the gateway. We see that an activity was created under the name Reservation 1, so we press F2 and change its name to Reservation Availability. Note that we are not changing the name of the transaction here, but rather the activity of the diagram that invokes the reservation transaction. When we inserted the gateway that allowed us to decide, we said that the flow to the right aimed at the customer transaction was the alternate flow and that the flow downwards was the regular flow, that is to say, when the individual making the reservation was already a customer. To indicate that the regular flow is the one going downwards, we select the connection, and in the properties window, we set the condition type property with the default value. Note that, on the diagram, the flow is shown with a green line going across it. We can now connect the assigned customer to reservation task to the reservation availability task because once the customer assignment is completed, we must also continue verifying availability for the reservation. Let's go on with our diagram. After completing the reservation availability task, we must assess the value we set for the reservation available attribute. If the checkbox is not checked, this means that the reservation is not available, and we must offer the customer a different package. To show this, we insert from the toolbar an exclusive gateway and connect it from the reservation availability task, and then connect its alternate flow 
which we draw to the left, to the reservation task to allow for the addition of a new reservation. Now we must enter the condition necessary for the alternate flow to take place, that is, when the reservation is not available. To indicate this on the diagram, we double click on the connection that is oriented to the left and write reservation available equals false. To this point, we've analyzed everything that occurs in the case of having to offer an alternate for the customer to travel since we could not confirm the reservation. What's left to do now is to take into account the case where a reservation is indeed confirmed. In such cases, we will not have any more tasks and the process comes to an end. To indicate that we want to end the diagram, we insert from the toolbar a none end event symbol and connect it from the gateway. This connection downwards is the gateway's regular flow. So when the reservation is confirmed, the process will be ended. To indicate this, we select the connection and in the properties window, we insert its condition type property with the default value. We have now completed the diagram for our business process. To test the operation, we will now execute it. We right click on the tab with the name of the diagram and select run. In the impact analysis, Genexus informs us that the reservation table will be created, which was expected, so we proceed to reorganize and go on with the execution. A screen is opened with the GXflow client, which has the appearance of an email inbox, where, for each user, we see the task spending according to the process defined. Checking this inbox, we can see a closed envelope and in the subject column we read Attraction Reservation. This tells us that we have defined this process and in the Tasks column we have the reservation task pending. To execute it, we select it and then press the Execute button or otherwise double click on the task. This will open the reservation transaction for us to enter the reservation. We leave the ID blank because it is auto-numbered. Enter the date, the number of passengers, which is 2, and leave the value of customer ID at 0 because the person making the reservation still isn't a customer of the agency. We then press confirm. We can see that Genexus tells us that the data was entered correctly, so we close the window with the X symbol. Now the task no longer has a closed envelope. It's now open with a symbol showing that the task has been performed. To go on to the following task, we press Send. The task we have pending execution is the customer transaction because we did not enter customer ID in the reservation. So the diagram's flow will continue to the right, opening the customer transaction so we can add the individual as a new customer. We execute the task. The customer transaction screen opens up and we enter the customer. We confirm and then close the window. We now press the send button to end that task and execute the following task. We see that the following task is the one called reservation availability. Recalling the process, the customer task invoked a task called assign customer to reservation which invoked a procedure to assign the customer identifier that was just entered in the reservation. Since the assign customer to reservation task is not interactive, it did not appear in the inbox when we ended the customer task. Instead, we saw the following task still pending, that is, reservation availability. We'll go back to the GXflow window to execute the reservation availability task by double clicking on it. The form of the reservation transaction is open for us to enter whether the reservation is available or not. If it is, we select the checkbox and press confirm. We see that the data was entered correctly, so we close the transaction window and press the send button to end the task. 
we now see the inbox is empty. This means that there are no more tasks pending execution and we are at the end of the process. Note that if we hadn't selected the checkbox, the workflow would have taken us again to the reservation transaction at the beginning of the diagram. Something we did not mention is that all these tasks were executed by the same user. This is so while we develop and test the process, but in reality, different users will be using it and will execute the different tasks according to their profiles in the organization. Another interesting thing to note is that we can see the process history and which ways in the diagram were used during the execution of the process. To see this history log, we select My Processes in the Navigator window. We are shown the process we've just executed, Attraction Reservation, which shows a completed status. We double click on it and see that a window opens up showing us the process history. In this window, we can see all the tasks that have been executed so far. If we go to More Actions, View Diagram, we can see the animated history by pressing play. So far, we've seen that Genexus enables us to model business processes in an intuitive manner, automatically solving the object that must be executed in each case according to the definition we made through the diagram. To learn more about this topic, you can visit the site shown on screen.